Oh, hey. Uh, let's go over some examples of productivity. Um, these are all related to the last video I did on productivity as a whole and the sort of things that matter that you should be thinking about to make the best use of your time and your positioning. Uh, mostly for Halo, it's all going to be Halo related. It applies to other stuff if you want it to, but um, I got a, a, quite a few games in last night. I think I played for like four hours. Um, some of that was social big team with friends, but I'm trying to get my accounts up into the hardcore ranks where most people actually play games and it went fairly well. Um, I think I dropped like one out of 12 games or something. Um, so these will all unfortunately be pretty low level games, but I don't have a high level account and I'm not a top player. Uh, but also if you're a top player, um, number A, you're not watching this video for advice. And uh, number B, if you are watching, let me know what I could do better. Um, but for the rest of you, also known as most of us, um, let's go through these. There's about five examples. Some of them are pretty short, but um, I try to grab <clears throat> times from the game where I thought it was a good representation of why the stuff that we're doing is important and then showing like how I actually do that in a game. Um, so this first one is related to multiple things like most of these will be. This is a pit TS game. Um, you actually can't see because I'm scoped in, but it's pretty early in the game. It's 13 to nine. So the break happened. Uh, I actually don't remember what happened, but this is our base <laughs> and they have our snipe tower. I think they also have our snipe, but there's been some fights going on here and we need to control this. Um, Overshield is coming up in about 15 seconds. So we need to clear our base so we don't spawn and die to their base, but we also need to come back and control overshield so we can pick it up. Um, so I come here, these people under a turret, he killed the guy under a turret and I saw one more lifting. So I'm gonna lift up. He jumped off for some reason. My friend's jumping on him, so I don't really have to go kill him. I probably could have been better about helping him, but I just wasn't and I go straight to OS. So it's 1241. Um, normally OS would be around 4550 this early in the game, but it's every, it's every even minute. Um, it's two minutes after you pick it up. So <clears throat> here I'm looking for, I want to get it. I'm also pre-aiming training because they also need to get OS, right? And I actually see this guy get the first shot. So he dies and I get overshield. And then I don't know about this. I'm still really figuring out the um, proper movements between like what to do when I get OS because there's only a few options and I don't really love any of them. But again, <clears throat> I need to prioritize getting them off our base. This guy has our sniper on our turret, so I kill him. So again, one more time, prioritize getting map control. We had to get our base back. So I did that first and then I immediately went to OS because it was coming up. Um, and because I knew it was coming up and I knew they also wanted it, it let me pre-aim... Um, the most likely place for somebody to come contest it. So I knew that it was, was dying. I should have helped my team. Um, I probably could have re-peaked off of tower, but minor things, again, always review your VODs and figure out what you can do better. So by moving out of here, coming better, I could have helped the guys court probably better. Um, but as it stands, I thought that was a good example of um, both retaking map control and then knowing where to go to be the most helpful for your team. If your team has overshield, you can do a lot with it. As you can see, we already brought the game back, right? It's 14-14 and the clip started 13-9. Um, some of this is just because we won this fight turret, but also um, it's 14-12 when I'm pushing out. And because I knew he was going for OS, I got to, I got to drop on him, right? Like he wasn't pre-aiming me. I don't know why, but because I'd had that advantage, um, that helped us get that kill as well. Uh, so that's the first one. Um, this is one of the major things. This also should really help you on maps that are unbalanced asymmetrically for things that are important. Um, pit is not the same with hardcore and normal settings. In Team Slayer, I don't know how familiar you are with pit, but hopefully somewhat, there is... In normal rank, there's one as Rocket Hall and Camo or Green because there's a green hallway with the two like dividers that block off the pit for each team. And in there, Camo spawns in normal and there's this uh, long hall on the other side of the map from 
OS that has rockets in it. In hardcore, there's nothing in that hallway. There's no reason to go there. Camo's replaced with rockets in the middle of the map, and everything else is on this side of the map. There's a sniper on each end, and there's OS. Um, so if you don't know where to go in Pit TS, it's most likely training. Um, for those that don't know what training is, it's here and here. It's this little, like, yellow square corner that leads to Sword Bridge. Um, we need this control because you need green control for camo, and you need bridge and training control to get your sniper and fight over OS. Um, so if three of your team are running down long haul on the other side of the map where there's fucking nothing there, like, what are you doing? You can run through the other flank, but, like, it's not a good place to be in general. Um, which is why most of the fighting occurs here and why I try to stay around this part of the map. Um, but hopefully that all makes sense to you. And let's go to the most boring clip I have. Um, to preface this, I went 45 and won this game because I had a laser. And it was boring as shit. But if you've ever played standoff, you don't want the team getting a Warthog, right? So I don't want to go to their team, die, and give them a laser, and then we lose Warthog control, and they run two Warthogs and a laser on us, so we just lose the game, right? Like, that's fucking miserable. Um, but I'm wasting laser because I see a new one's up, so I'm trying to get some kills with the one that I have, and then I go grab the laser, and I go back to my side of the map. Um, I do not like this responsibility. This is, like, the least fun thing I can do on this map. I want to hold forward and BR people. Um, here I'm running back because I have not enough BR ammo to keep shooting their team across the map. So I'm going to find a BR that's spawned to get more ammo to do it, which is not fun. Um, but like, this is the most productive thing I can do. There's one laser on the map. If you lose laser, it's really hard to remove a warthog and their warthog spawns like every 30 seconds. So we need to make sure that they don't get it. Um, uh, my team is just dumpstering their team and I could run at their team and it's, I could be more pushed up. Like I could probably be on this rock and do a bit more with my life, but it's just not fun. Um, I think we actually lose this cap because they have a shotgun there and I didn't see the guy driving by. So that's my mistake. Um, but if you're playing big team, think about stuff like that, right? Like there's one very important thing on this map and it's the laser. If you have the laser, you can run a warthog and they have a hard time removing it. If you don't have a laser and they're good with laser and warthog, your life is miserable. Um, so that's about it. Uh, big team, there's all just running at people. So like, it's not too important, but also that's a prime example of, is there a map objective you can control? Then you should probably be doing it. In that case, it's the laser. It's the only objective. Um, there are bombs. So like, yes, you could be running a bomb, which if your team has, if your teammate has a laser, run the bomb if you can, but I had lasers. So that was my responsibility. Um, this one, we win the break on Heretic TS. And by win the break, I mean we kill one person and get full map control, which, I mean, welcome to low-level hardcore, I guess. And I shot my friend because I'm bad. Um, but here, I don't know how the heck this happened, but we have a guy, their car bubble, we're pushing their car street, and I can walk top mid for free. So I'm going to walk top mid for free because I can see the entire fucking map. Um, so this is prime exerting pressure. If they are not denying you power positions take them i don't know you guys remember the positioning video but p3 can see everything top mid can see more of everything the only problem is you have nowhere to go and everyone can see you um so this is kind of risky because like i have the only kill which is weird but also i know i can do it because the only people that can shoot me are in there where they're being run at from car three and their pink street and car three and we have their car bubble so like i'm fine to do this so i do it uh, he dies, uh, that kid, someone else kills him before I can. And then we're in their base, so I turn to look for spawns. They're probably going to spawn red. They do spawn red. Um, so this is me just exerting pressure. Movement's not great. And here, I should not have rechallenged. Um, so this is just, we get top control. Right? I recognize we're pushing their base. It's a little slow. Killed him. See their base. We're going to spawn red. So I turn around and shoot red right get shots on him get shots on him here i'm about to be one or two shot i can use this little like knob in in top mid and let blitz kill this kid in in, in top red like here i know he's being shot and he's looking at me and he's weak because i've shot him i don't have to re-challenge this and i could have stayed alive but um this is if you have an advantage take it 
this is the best way to exert pressure. I didn't have to die here. Um, I could have played it a little bit better. Like I probably could have shot the guy over there instead of going up a sword, but I want to jump to sword so I could use that wall to protect myself. Um, this game was a stomp. This was like 50 to six or something. It was bad. And this is why they let me do whatever I wanted to do. So we had P3, we had top mid, and we just ran spawns the entire game. Um, you won't be able to get away with that often, but when you can do it, it's really, really strong. Um, this one is the same game. Yeah, it's the same game. It's 33 to five. Like this was not good, but you can see why, right? So here I got shot. I turned around to see if I could re-challenge and there was no one there. So I put shots across the map to help a friend. I get shot and here, so I went to look window to the guy who I thought shot me in the back originally and saw no one and decided to help my friend on pink three with this guy. And here I get shot again. I could maybe contest, but there's really no reason to because I'm like three shot, maybe two shot if it's bad. So what I do is hide our car slide because he can't shoot me. There is 0% chance he can hit me here and my friend Blitz is being pushed so I can help him. So there's some bad shots, but you get it. And then my friends pushed and killed the guy who was killing window for me. Um, so this is an instance of not dying, help me not die. It also helped me help my teammates across the map. Um, like there's a lot of ways to not die here. I could have run back to car three bubble. I could have just sat car slide. I could run all the way back to my base, but instead I found the best way to keep myself alive while also helping my team. So I got him weak. I'm dying there and I just ignore him. I don't need to challenge that guy. There's no benefit to me challenging him. And instead I can help my friend and I get a kill for free and I stay alive because of it. Um, and then again, we're just running spawns. This, this game was not close, but it wasn't close because all of my team was productive and I had good positioning. Um, this one, I tried to find a good example of having to die for an objective, but again, it was a little of hardcore and the games were fucking easy. So like, can really find one. Um, I had some closer games, but they were slayers and there's like, if I'm not the good person on the team, I'm not running power weapons. So I didn't have any of those to really talk about, but this is onslaught flag. Um, they're running their first flag. And here I decided that I didn't have any nades. So the best way to stop this flag is just to run at their base. Um, I missed some of my first BR shots. So I don't get the two shot beat down, which really sucks because I could have stopped that and returned it. But this is sort of a, uh, I don't know if you hear people talk about high risk, low reward plays or like, that's really probably the best way to put it. High risk, low reward where like, like no scoping people for no reason. Right. Or like if you're read peeking a sniper when you're one shot and they're full shields, like there's not a lot of benefit for taking that fight. But if you do it, it's really flashy. Like there's a lot of stuff like that where you can make some really cool plays, but it's rarely going to happen and it sucks when you die and it's probably not worth it. Um, the basis of that is that almost nothing you do is guaranteed, right? There's, I mean, there are some situations where you can create a hundred percent things that happen. Um, but I don't remember if you remember what I was talking about, the uh, the long short clip and the movement ones. Um, I was tossing numbers out where like 80% I die, 90% he does or whatever. You should always have a general idea of like how likely is it that you get the kill or die. Um, so in this, play, in this play, I thought it was like 60-40. Like I thought there was an, a uh, majority chance. Not a very high one, but I thought I could stop this flag. And I could have, if I didn't miss my full first BR on the third guy, I get a triple, I can pull their flag and return ours. But if you see here, there's at least two people going for this flag and I have enough BR shots to kill one person. Or if I had grenades, I could pre-nade this, but I don't have any grenades. So I can nade BR this guy, but then I have to four shot him from here to here. I can't get four shots off in that time. Um, if my friends that were respawning were in better positions, like these two who just died, if they weren't dead and we had a guy here and here, I wouldn't be 
we're gonna get this flag to stop it because we could while they were capping um get them four dead they'll probably cap it but if they're four dead we could pull a counter cap but because these guys are on respawn we won't be in a position fast enough to do that um so my best option is to try to stop the flag um in flag games, if you can counter cap, sometimes it's worth it because if you get a good spawn trap, especially on Onslaught, you can run two flags. So they cap one, you cap two. But they're dead. I didn't think that was a thing that was going to happen. So my choice was to run in um, and try and stop it. I knew there was a good chance I'd die here, but I also knew there was a good chance I'd stop it. And as you can see on this shot right here, if I hit all three of these bullets, that guy is also dead. We may trade, but I have my friends on respawn and two of his team are dead. But that shot didn't fully connect. So um, this is one for me where dying for this is 100% okay, right? It's a flag game. It's first to five. This game can turn around, and if we lose by one flag because I didn't make this play, that's on me. But I missed a shot. It's the mechanics issue. Again, I'm not a top player. But um, that was my thought process for that one. And I thought it was the best example I had to show where, like, sometimes you're just going to die. Um, holding forward here was by far the best thing I could do for my team. But uh, I think it's going to wrap it up. Uh, I think this is actually the shortest video I've made in, <laughs> like, 15 minutes. But, um, again, I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Uh, that's about it. Oh, uh, I do stream, so... If you want to come out, say hi, go for it. If not, totally fine. Again, uh, that's about it. Thanks, guys.